Hi there. The Jews the Good Life. It's Straw, is it? Hi. Trying to get prices machine. National Huawei. The K24. The K24. The K24. This is not a problem. Time's down there. Date today is the 18th of January, Thursday morning, and, and 24. To happen is operators are intent on closing ticket offices where you would be able to get the full range of tickets is that they need to update their machines. Machines don't generally sell every single type of ticket with split ticketing not available and often not advanced fares which are cheaper. The rail delivery group, which represents operators, said there had been good progress on reforming fares, but more could be done. It added changes like the expansion of pay as you go contactless were helping to make ticketing simpler. The passenger watchdog Transport Focus told us machines needed to be easier to use and have the best value fare available for people to be confident of getting the best deal. Katie Austin, BBC News. Let's speak to Sam Calder, travel journalist for the Independent. Hello, mate, my friend Simon. Meet the Simons. <laughs> Sam, morning to you. Lighten. These Thanks. figures are pretty alarming. If you're buying a ticket this morning, it's almost you know in advance, buy from a machine at your peril. It certainly is very worrying. Good piece of work by which magazine here. Um, but ultimately, the big problem is that the ticket offices don't stand a chance with 55 million different fares. What you need to do it's is like you simplify those. Um, I've been doing a bit of mystery I'll buy my tickets from the machine. Um, here I go the train travelling. Four different train operators. You can go anywhere you want to, from Paris and Brussels to Leicester and Derby. Dover and Canterbury, Brighton and Cambridge. You've got three different uh, brands of ticket machines, and they're all different. Some of them say, yeah, we really can't do very much here. We can't sell you advanced tickets. Others are slightly less helpful. I was trying to get a ticket to Canterbury just to test it out, and that's just an extraordinary process. You um, hit, uh, I'd like to go to Canterbury. You tap in the uh, first few letters, it comes up, Oh, do you want Canterbury East or Canterbury West? Well, I don't know. I just want to go to Canterbury. When you get past that stage, it then says, Ah, oh, OK, the first thing you can buy is an upgrade for your existing ticket. I don't want an upgrade. I haven't got a ticket. And then it finally offers you two, one which goes from here and one which goes from a station the other side of London, which is no, which is understandable why well, a survey by TransPennine Express found that three quarters of us are buying digital tickets um, with uh, uh, only uh, a, a very small minority getting them from machines or indeed very good ticket offices where you can speak to a human being. Or oh, and they also said one in 30 people don't bother buying tickets at all, which is very bad. Oh dear. Uh, so, and, then, and you look at the numbers, uh, there was one example that uh, they've come up with, which is Holmes Chapel in Cheshire. So we're going from Cheshire to London. Um, so if you buy from the machine, it was going to be 154% more for the ticket. So in terms of numbers, that means the machine was going to charge £66. Train line, you go, go online, yeah. £26 for exactly the same journey. That makes no sense at all. Yes, there's all sorts of anomalies like that. Now, some of them are because... Um, the ticket machines do not generally sell advanced tickets. So, for instance, half past seven, the cheapest ticket in Britain is on sale Aye, from it Manchester is. Piccadilly to lovely Stockport. 70 pence to you, Charlie. Um, and that's a great value ticket, but you're not going to find it from a ticket machine. You can only get it online. Then you've got the problem All of right. split ticketing, which Trainline is very good at exploiting. So, for instance, Blimey. also at half past seven, wow. if you're at Bristol Temple Meads and you need to get to London Paddington, you can go to a ticket machine. It will say, Charlie, £125 to you to London. And um, personally, I don't want to pay that, frankly, who would? So people who know the Didcot Dodge will buy one ticket to Didcot Parkway and another one from there to Paddington, and they say £45. If you rationalise the ticket system, then automatically the ticket machines will get more sensible but as it is they haven't got a hope and neither does, does the poor old passenger who just wants to turn up buy a ticket at a reasonable price i'm not Very fast i'll pay the price I, i'm i'm you know, gonna cycle home and uh, have a cup of tea in a minute i'm flipping freezing
<laughs> we appreciate you staying in the country. Where's your hat, mate? Have a cup of tea. Where's your hat? <laughs> there you go. Last week, this rocket was launched from Florida, attempting the first. Oh, yeah, we remember, remember this, guys. So I made sure last week. spacecraft's goal had been to deliver five NASA instruments to the moon's surface to study the local environment ahead of human missions later this decade. Now, despite an impressive takeoff, the lander has suffered a major propeller oh, dear. after launching, and so it makes a safe touchdown impossible. So today, the spacecraft is expected to re-enter the Earth's atmosphere and burn up, scattering debris in unpopulated areas. For those, yeah, they're the Atlantic, I Let's presume. talk about this more. We're joined by John Pernick Fisher, who's a research fellow at University of Manchester. Right. Uh, so it's just going to just go through the kind of science of it. It's just going to disappear. Is it? It's going to be burnt up completely. Yeah, yeah, it's gone. That's right. Yeah, yeah. So I guess that's pretty normal procedure, I guess, for sort of bits of unwanted space mm -hmm. mm -hmm. They call it garbage. It's common for them to then be uh, reintroduced back into Earth, and the size of it means that, and the thickness of the atmosphere means it will just burn up completely. So the chance of debris is quite low, really. And the ferocity and the intensity of, uh, of that heat that's created literally just. They everything. everything. Yeah, exactly. So it's the same process when you see um, meteorites and, and meteor showers in, in the night sky. It's the same process where rocks are being burnt up in, in the atmosphere. Do we? Will we be able to see any of this? Um, well, it's happening this evening, our time. So I guess that'll be quite early in the morning. So it's just north of New Zealand. It, it's supposed to be um, oh, yeah. entering the Earth's atmosphere. So I won't see it. I'm not quite sure if it's going to be big enough to actually see in the naked eye in the daylight. But uh, certainly, if anyone's in the New Zealand area, it's worth, it's worth looking at. Probably not this audience, I guess. <laughs> I know. I know this um, mission was about research as well. But I was just reading some of the details. It had some really precious cargo. Mm. It had the ashes of couple of people who were really into space work. That's an understatement, isn't it? You know, it had the creator of Star Trek, yeah. Gene Roddenberry, um, sci-fi writer Arthur C. Clarke had their ashes on yeah. board. Obviously, it must have been their wishes to kind of end up in space. Yeah, that's right. And, and not just uh, uh, those people, too. Also, a, a few hundred people, I believe, were also on board the ashes of a few hundred people. So, yeah, oh, it's, God, it's really sad. obviously sad for all those families. Uh, those people oh, whose dear. final wish was to... Space. This oh, is the nature crikey. of space, though, isn't it? it Failure. Is. Yeah. I mean, that's what happens, and you just keep going. I mean, there's, there's still the appetite to explore. Yeah, that's right. I mean, so if you look back, uh, back the past few decades, wow, around like around the Star the Trek, that have, sad, the moon have failed. So it is, it is really challenging. Um, but you're right. Uh, it's it, there is a renewed interest in the moon, and so um, over the next decade, really, leading up to the return of humans, uh, setting foot on the moon through uh, NASA's Artemis program. And there's going to be a whole bunch of... Back to the moon, guys. Back to the moon. This is not going to be government-run now, or state-run. The yeah. private firms are in on the act. And, it and necessary cost because money. The, the public spending is not happening. Yeah, that's right. And so I think that's NASA's model now, basically, where they're going to contract private companies to, uh, yeah, to fly these packages to the moon. Mm. Uh, so this is a, a, a mission that is over. It will disappear completely. What's the, the thing that people should cling on to now by way of excitement about space? Well, I think the main thing is that this is just the start. So I think, you know, as I said, there's going to be basically pretty much a new mission to the moon every year for pretty much the next decade, culminating in humans returning to the moon. Hopefully they're not going to cram and burn it and crash. So that's the million dollar question, isn't it? So in theory, it should be uh, towards the end of the decade, 2026, 2027, that kind of time frame. But as with all these things, there's always a bit of margin of error. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, don't tell me, about tell me about it, mate. <laughs> pretty much every year. Why the delay on putting people on the moon? Again? Well, what, what's, what's, going, what, what's happening? I guess the main thing is to make sure that the, the technology and the rockets are proven and are safe. And as we've seen, we'll see safety, health and safety, there, there basically. Challenges in, in getting it out into space and, and towards the moon. And so obviously, if we're putting people on board, we need to really make sure that it works safely. It's really tight and, and is, there's no problems, basically, I guess. Even though there's um, public-private cooperation, which country is leading at the moment? Well, it certainly seems to be a lot of uh, private American companies at the moment. But what I would say is that it is a global effort compared to what it was back in the Apollo era. Well, India yeah. did a race. Absolutely. India uh, are very successful at the moment. China are very successful Indeed. at the moment. Uh, lots of uh, Gulf states at the moment, too, that are putting a lot of money in terms of um, space travel. So it's a lot more cooperative and it's a lot more global than it used to be uh, 50 years ago. For sure. That's probably a stupid question. Whoever lands on the moon, you can't claim a bit of the moon. 
No, as of yet, definitely not. Um, uh, unfortunately, I think the regulations have still got a bit of um, sort of uh, capacity to catch up, I guess. So ultimately, I think what us in the scientific community would like is perhaps something a bit more akin to uh, how Antarctica is treated today, where it's sort of research only and, um, and sort of limited activity can, can go on there. But and no um, one claims land. No, no one claims land. And obviously, as, as commercial activities ramp up and as different countries start to, to sort of land a bit more frequently, then we're going to have to rethink about how we want to approach the lunar surface a bit more. Fascinating. That's going to be a different Historically speaking. Watch, isn't it? <laughs> very interesting. Here you uh, go, guys. Fisher, thank you so much. All right, like should you open, subscribe to my channel on Sino Gems with a full speed video. Always quite support the needs of many. Outweigh the needs This is my friend Spike and Jimbo. We find it 3 to 5 pm on Soho Ratio. And this is my friend. Shane, every Friday on Soul Hills Ratio, 10 a.m. top end. Shane, who the years race series station show on Soul Hills Ratio every Friday. And this is my friend John the last show every Sunday at 9 to 12 p.m. live on the Woking radio station show. Because we're going to space, we're going to the moon again. You hear that? Star Trek, Jane, Reverend Rose, Ashes are not going to land on the moon. Uh, it's going to burn out in the atmosphere over New Zealand. What a sad, awful event. Oh well, it's crashing on Sunny Joe. Bye, everyone.